Hey Drivers, welcome again. Welcome to Girls Talk, our time together where we discuss everything that has to do with us as women, mother, as mothers, as wives, as career women, business women, and all the challenges that are peculiar to us and the way forward or the way around these challenges. So um, we continue with the topic we introduced last week uh, titled Woman, You Can Have It All. And I think we've gone ahead to make a case on why we should aim at enjoying the best of two worlds. The world of building your family and at the same time being able to chase your dream, whatever that dream might be. And we backed it up with some uh, examples and some scriptural stories. Uh, today, uh, I will start off by looking um, at two key factors that can help us in this journey of finding fulfillment as complete women. You know, there are so many uh, things that, come, that can come into play, so many uh, factors we can look at that will help a woman to be able to easily achieve that. But personally, I think amongst all these factors, there are two major ingredients that we must take cognizance of. Whatever our reality is, whatever the dream is, whatever our peculiar situation is, or the dynamics of our, uh, uh, the dynamism of our own uh, uh, particular home or uh, relationship, there are two key factors that we must uh, take. Uh, uh, into consideration and we begin today to look at these two factors one of them is uh, the first one is gaining spousal support and the second one is coming to appreciate your unique position as a woman so, uh, today we will try and take our time to look at the first part gaining spousal support this is something that is very fundamental for a woman that is something you have to deliberately and intentionally work towards. You know, these days there's always this um, phrase out there, especially for young women, you know, uh, make sure you marry a man that can support you. Make sure you marry a man that will support you. And it sounds very nice and woke, you know, but I always ask this question, how do you know a man that can support you? How do you determine that? Yes, he might be ready to support who you are now and what you are doing. But what happens two, three years, four years down the line as you are evolving, your interest is evolving, your uh, perspective of life is changing, your uh, idea of who you are is evolving, and then you are moving into a different uh, space. How do you guarantee that that support? will continue because you don't even know what really that support could make, mean for you 10 years from now. I've done uh, a write-up on that on my Facebook uh, timelines about two years ago that from personal experience, I know that you really can't tell. You as a woman can't tell what this support means and how you will need your husband to support you all through your marital journey. The man have no idea what this support could mean. What you can only think or talk about is where you people are at today. What, what happens when things change, like things must change. We know that the only constant thing in life is change. We are all growing as individuals, as human beings. If you don't grow, there's a problem. And every relationship keeps evolving. Every relationship keeps growing. It is natural. It is expected. So when these changes occur, how do you guarantee that you still have your man by your side? And the thing about this is, why this is very important is it will help you in moving very fast. However you want to think about it. You can do it alone. You can do, uh, uh, even when the man is not completely in sync with your drive, your vision, the direction, you can, you can brave it all alone. You can try to ride against the tide and still make it. But we know that trying to ride against the tide is not usually a very easy thing to do. Sometimes it, it can get discouraged 
midway and drop it. You know, there's a book I want to recommend that I find very uh, um, instructive on this subject matter. This is the book, The Girl Entrepreneurs by uh, um, Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika. What she did here was she collated the story of about 20 women, 20 women plus, in Nigerian women who have made great strides in their different uh, uh, industries, in their different spaces as entrepreneurs, as career women, as space setters, in their uh, different spaces. They have their, their names that any one of them you hear, you recognize na the name by the achievement or by the industry where they play in. You know, one thing I find very, very uh, uh, interesting about this book is that one thing ran through the, their, all their story, the 20 plus of them, one particular factor ran through all their story. Each and every one of them were able to gain the support of their husband. Each and every one of them were able to get their husbands to be their number one fans. So it's an interesting book for us to read, for you to pick, look for and read. It will help you a great deal. Maybe reading their stories, you will begin to pick nuggets of the things they did at different stages to be able to achieve this in their own uh, um, personal lives. And this thing of spousal support is not a one-off thing. It's not something that uh, you can achieve overnight. It's a process. It's a process, you know, that you, is, is, you keep working at it because who you are today, like I said earlier, will be different from who you will be two, three, four, five years down the line and what your interest will be or what your passion might be. Even if you are running at, with the same vision, there, there will be changes, there will be growth, and with each growth comes its own peculiar uh, uh, challenges. You know, that every one of you, you and your spouse, must be um, uh, uh, in sync with whatever it is you, you want to do. And one, one of the things I have recognized or observed to be one of the reasons that men some men or most men try to kick against their wives pushing as hard as they want to all boils down to insecurities their fears yes men have fears men are insecure like every human being like you and i everybody have a level of insecurity or fear that we are every day we are working on and we are improving so is your husband Forget the deep voice, forget the bicep, forget that aura of I'm in charge. They have their fears. Just like in every one of us ladies, there's always this little girl that is always trying to find expression. So also for our men, there's always this little boy that is always needing assurance. And for you, the major job you might need to do to be able to get him on your side as he relates to you chasing after your dream is just to reassure him. It's just to learn to speak to these fears and insecurities of ease, whether spoken or not. Some of these fears might be unfounded, but if they have them, then it's valid. It's, you, you must answer. You have to answer to that, either with words, but most times with your actions. Some men, especially in our environment, in Africa, where we live, there are some um, peculiar fears that men could have about their women pushing forward because whether we like it or not our men we are raised most of our men we are raised to feel a little bit or a tad superior over the woman is is cultural a man was raised to subtly believe that mentally they are superior to women they are superior in their worldview and stuff like that. But I think this generation is uh, proving that's very wrong and is get a, is, uh, uh, like a difficult thing for me, most of these men to accept and you know understand. You know, so this fear could actually 
stem from that place where he's riding on the fact that I'm the, the, the chief here, I am the breadwinner, I, am, I earn more, I am the one, then all of a sudden the wife is climbing so fast that the paycheck she, he, she brings home might even be bigger than his. There's always this fear like, ah, I'm going to lose my respect as the head of the family. I might even lose my place to her. My authority might be in question now because my wife is earning more than I, I do or because my wife has become more visible or more out there. People recognize her face. People recognize her works more than they do me. It actually could bite a man secretly. It could be a fear. And so, and because there have been instances not far from us, everyone you can think of somewhere within your immediate environment that something like that happened, where the woman immediately she started earning more, immediately she started uh, uh, not even earning more, having, becoming financially independent, they become a different person. They became very rude. They became, you know, very brash and talked to the man anyhow. And, you know, so the other man who could be your husband, having had that experience with his friend or cousin or uncle, and then begin, uh, start seeing his wife pushing and getting into that, he could get a little bit shaky. He could get a little bit uh, destabilized and might want to do things not because he's a bad person but because he's responding or reacting out of fear or insecurities he might become start doing things that might look mean and selfish and wicked but really when you come down to investigate why and if you people are able to come together to have this conversation and you find out that it, it, these things can be solved. These things, he, this is not really how he wants to live. He could be better, you know. So it becomes very important, very, very important for you as a woman to make sure that you answer to these fears as you perceive them and, and these insecurities and recognize and acknowledge the fact that they are real. Don't say, but how, why would he feel like that? That is selfish. That is how he feels and it, it matters. If that is how he feels, then answer to that. Show him why he shouldn't feel like that. Tell him why he shouldn't feel like that. Speak to him. Give him instances. Give him evidence that that wouldn't be a problem. And you will see him relax. You will see him become your best uh, support system. Because you really need him on your side. Like I said before, it's not like you can't do it too without him. But with him on your side, with him in agreement, it becomes a lot uh, easier for both of you. Then also give him time. Give him time to get uh, in terms with your drive, with your push, with where you are going. Give him time. Keep talking to that fear. Keep speaking to that fear. Keep showing him. But give him time. Because a whole lot of us, both male and female, handle marriage like it's a sprint. It's not. Ma marriage is a marathon. There's nothing you achieve in marriage that usually is overnight. You must enter, ha you, you must handle your marriage and your relationship as marathon. Meaning that you must recognize the fact that marriage is a patient game. You must be patient. You must learn patience. You must learn to give your partner patience to grow, to evolve, to mature, to become. Lovingly and kindly, you must learn that give him time. Who he is today is not, he won't, it's not permanent, he will evolve. So you have expressed yourself, you have over time shown him, okay, you don't have anything to worry. You have even told him, give him time. This fear and these insecurities, we are not born overnight. They are not going to be answered to or dissolved by just one conversation and it's done deal. That first conversation, that first uh, time that you people come together and begin to talk about it, it's just the opening, it's just the introduction. Situations are going to arise that will still allow you or need you to keep saying it. If you say it and you do it long enough, in the small things that matter, in the small, small areas, when he's sure of that, when he's confident of his position, of his 
respect of his place in your heart, he's going to relax for you. He's going to calm down. He's going to become an asset and not an obstacle. So giving him time to evolve, to become that uh, husband that you really, really want, that understands you. Then we must also learn to know how to communicate what we want in clear terms as women. We must learn how to use our voices. We shouldn't expect him to know, but he should know now. I, I mean, why or do I need to tell him? Is he not a human being? Can't he see? You'll be shocked. Many things that flies over his head, especially men. Most men really don't pick on hints. You better know that. They don't pick on hints. You have to learn to articulate in a kind and clear way what you want. Over and over again. You say it, he didn't understand, try another way. But we must learn, the, as women, we must learn that one of our greatest and strongest tool is our voice. We can change any situation with our voice, with our words, if we can learn and appreciate the magic of the spoken or written words. Words are powerful. What can build, what can destroy, is how do you use it? And this uh, using words is, involves a whole lot of things. There is timing there, there is tone of voice, there is body language, a whole lot of things that we'll also look at as we get along on how to communicate effectively and understanding how your man understands best, the language he hears best, because everybody is different. The way I can communicate to my husband certain things will be different the way you can communicate to your own husband, but is to find that way, that method, that language that he understands, the timing for him, and take advantage of that. But we must learn that it's very important that we will communicate effectively what we want, what we don't want, where we are going, where we don't want to go. Create boundaries with your words, what you can tolerate, what you cannot tolerate. Over time, we must learn it. It's very, very important. Very important. The next thing is also to learn to carry him along, which also has to do a lot with communication. Learn to carry him along. Don't run solo. Even if you people are doing different things, everybody has. Let him keep him up to speed with what is going on in your life. Let him now start hearing things from friends, from family, from your siblings, what is going on in your life. Carry him along. He is your partner. You guys are a partner. Because by the end of the day, whatever you are doing or whatever he is doing, it's for the good of the family. It's for the good of the family. Whatever it is, you must learn to make him understand that you guys are a team. You are shooting towards the same goalposts. It's not a competition. Know that men can actually be competitive. When a, their women start moving, they might see it, I, I have to pick up and I have to, it's competition. Men naturally are very competitive. I've had a, some young men, they, uh, the wife is doing very well and they feel uh, the reason he's doing this is uh, uh, he's treating me the way he's treating me is because she's doing very well. Now I'm going to, you know, get to my A game and I'm going to make this money and show her. But I know that for most women, that is not the drive. That is not the motive behind our drive. We are not trying to outdo anybody, I hope. <laughs> I hope, you know. So you also recognize that they can be competitive. So you must find a way to um, carry him along and let him understand what is going on. If there's... Little or no secrecy, it becomes more open. When things are more open, it becomes easier for our partner to know where they stand with us and not be second-guessing us and trying to gauge what is going on and if he's still our number one or not, you know. And um, so, for instance, in my case, before I started doing this, I had to call my husband and sit him down. And we have to have a conversation. Yes, before now we've been having this conversation. We have been talking about me starting something like this. I've always uh, 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 even pushed me. You know a whole lot of these people come to you and I see the changes, you know. Why not take this out and all that? 
But when I started planning to take a, a definite step in doing this, I also realized that because of how we started, so many things I'm going to say, so many of our stories I'm going to share because like I promised you in, the, in my introduction, uh, introductory video that I'm going to be as authentic, as honest and as transparent as I possibly can. And this means that there are so many of the examples of our personal stories that I might share here that will not really sound very nice or very... Uh, will not, that might not put him in the best of light. You know, so I have to let him understand the, this danger. So I called my CEO. This thing I'm going to do, these are the possible things that might come out. In fact, a whole lot of things might come out and, you know, please, how do we go about it? I want to be sure that you are fully with me and that you are also uh, uh, in sync with what I'm doing. And he said something that is funny I brought it up, that, but that the truth is that he on his own has actually thought about it and processed it because that's how my husband works. It takes time to process things, you know, has processed it. My uh, lights have gone, but I'll continue, you know, to process it that he had actually thought about it that, yes, that this is our story, that if I'm saying I want to be authentic in delivering this uh, uh, mandate, that it has to be complete, that our stories will not be complete without all these things that hurdles that we cross, without all these mistakes that we made individual both on his side and on my side if and then we might not be able to help people effectively as we could if we are just saying the nice nice things so that he's he's very very comfortable with that and he's ready for whatever that will come out of it because that was not who he was then it's not who he is today that he knows who he is so if anybody is going to define him by his past that is their own problem and it was a big relief for me a very very big uh, relief and it gave me the freedom to put everything and throw everything to uh, uh, being able to get this across to women to in order to help them so get making sure that you carry him along what is going on in your office what is going on in your business space uh, uh, let him know what is going on because of this life now, I wanted to share a personal story, but I think I might have to stop here and I will share that story in the next episode before I continue with the next topic. Uh, but I hope that um, some things have been able to drop. And like I keep saying, if you have questions, please send to me via my email memoristcowell at gmail.com so I will, maybe one of these uh, weeks or uh, episode will take our time to answer the ones that we need to answer in the public space but if it's something that is personal that you need us to talk about one-on-one -on -one, i can always share my own uh, perspective and if there's any resource person or resource material that i have access to i can refer you to them you know but please send your stories and send the areas, topics that you would love us to handle in this, our conversation that you think people need to know or that you want to be dealt with and we will take it from there. Don't forget maymorriscowell at gmail.com. maymorriscowell at gmail.com. And I hope to see you in the next video coming up next week. Stay blessed and be the best that you can. Bye.